may I speak with Mrs. McNabb? And those words were very hard for me to say as a 17-year-old. You see, since I'd reached such a ripe old age, I was ready to transition from mowing yards to get a real job. After all, I knew I wanted to work inside where it was cool. I didn't know much more than that. The store was Williams Hardware in beautiful downtown Miami, Oklahoma, my hometown. You see, I'd been going into that hardware store since I was a young boy. My dad and I made many trips there. I knew they were looking for someone to work, and I figured that someone might as well be me. Mrs. McNabb was the owner. She looked me up and down and asked me what I knew about her business. She'd seen me in the store many times, but wanted me to know that she was the one in charge. After talking to me for a bit, she said she'd get back to me. A few days later, she called and told me she would hire me for a week just to see how it went. And after a week, she told me I'd done okay and I could keep working for a while. Best of all, I was going to work inside where it was cool. Little did I know that the air conditioner in that store didn't work. <laughs> and the temperature was usually 90 degrees in the summertime or higher. For the next four and a half years, I worked in that hardware store. I worked there until the last semester of college. And thanks to Williams Hardware and a great mom and dad, I got to go to school. I spent those four and a half years doing a lot of things. I waited on people, I threaded pipe, I made keys, and I learned. I learned the customer is always right. I also learned when it was canning season, everyone depended on us to have the stock of canning parts they needed. Gaskets for the Presto and Miramatic canners, gauges and weights for those same canners. I also learned that the oil from the pipe threader would absolutely ruin the brand new shirt I had bought to wear to work. <laughs> I learned a lot at Williams Hardware. The biggest thing I learned was everyone is different, but they're right in their own way. Everyone had a snapshot of their lives that they carried around with them. And while different, they were also the same in a lot of ways. They loved their families and needed to provide for them. It could be providing by canning vegetables or providing for them by fixing the plumbing. And whether they bought a lot of merchandise or a little, they were all important to our little store and that little town we lived in. You know, Numac Electric's a lot the same way. We have people who sign up new customers and we have people who build power lines to them. We have people who engineer those lines and we have people who account for the money that we spend on those lines. They're all important to what we do and one can't get the job done without the other. We have customers who use a tremendous amount of electricity and others who might only use enough for a single well, but they're all very important and very critical and equal as evidenced by each having a vote in our cooperative structure. Williams Hardware played an important part in my young life. It taught me about people and how everyone was equally important. I also still know how to thread pipe. And I also still know how to put a gasket in a pressure cooker, and you can ask my wife about that one. It was 39 years ago in July that I started working in that store, and I will always remember those times. Thank you, Mrs. McNabb, for giving me a chance so many years ago. Now that's a snapshot of my life. We all have such snapshots, moments in time that contribute to who we are today. These snapshots are different for each and every one of us and we learn from our experiences. Now Mark Twain once said, if you hold a cat by the tail, you learn things you cannot learn any other way. Now think about that one for a minute. There's a lot of truth to that. Our lives all take unique paths. What snapshots made you a member of New Mac Electric? Are you simply the next generation to live on the family farm? Or did you always want to live in the country? Was it a love for animals that led you to rural living? Or do you enjoy getting your hands in the soil and living off the land? You have power today because of snapshots from generations ago, when perhaps your relatives came together and helped form the co-op. 
You enjoy the service reliability that you do because of the efforts of generations of employees and board members through the years. And many snapshots of listening to you have led to the personal service that you received today from your co-op. And if you think about it, the seven cooperative principles are a snapshot of their own because collectively they represent what we're about at NUMAC. Like all co-ops, we follow these principles. Voluntary and open membership. Democratic control by you, the member owner. Economic participation by each member autonomy and independence, providing education, training, and information, cooperation among cooperatives, and lastly, concern for community. Now folks, let's give you some more snapshots, but before you take a picture, do you ever say, take it to my good side? Well, here's some pictures that really turned out nice. For the 21st consecutive year, we're returning capital credits to you this year totaling approximately $1.3 million. I'm really proud of that. This retirement represents the remainder of the margins from 1998 and 15% from 1999 and will go to members from those years. But we've got some more good news and I think this is the really photogenic part of my speech. Another good one. On the bill that you receive in December, we're going to be giving you a power cost adjustment, a one-time PCA of $350,000. Now, how's that for a Christmas present? This will go to all of our regular customers based on their November usage. So, counting capital credit retirements and rate abatements, we have now returned nearly $26 million to you, our members, over the past 21 years. Now, doesn't that make you proud to be a member of this co-op? Now, let's look at a snapshot of the past year. The annual report, which was mailed to you, showed NUMAC had almost $41 million in electric sales in 2017. Net margins were just over $4.9 million. Operating margins were just over $3.1 million and total co-op assets are more than $116 million. It was a very solid year. Now when we start talking dollars, like we talked about before this morning, I'm sure most of you are wondering about the rate you pay for your electricity. Every year I tell you about factors that affect your rates. Certainly, environmental regulations will always have a significant impact. President Trump has remained committed to a deregulatory course since taking office which has been favorable all in all to the electric industry. This summer, he did replace his EPA administrator, Scott Pruitt, but his replacement, Andrew Wheeler, has stayed true to the president's intentions. In order to best position ourselves for regulatory changes, our wholesale power suppliers, Associated Electric in Springfield, and Camo Power in Vanita have developed a well-diversified mix of coal and natural gas generation, as well as renewables, such as hydro, wind, and solar. But we will always be subject to the changes in governmental standards. Now, let me give you some more perspective on the impact of government on your electric rates. Over the past two decades, Associated has spent well over a billion dollars to stay ahead of these government regulations, and I did say a billion with a B. Now, do you realize how big a billion is? Let's give some perspective. You know, a million with an M, that's a big number. Well, a million seconds, one million seconds, that's 12 days. One million seconds is 12 days. Now, how long's a billion seconds? Folks, a billion seconds is 31 and a half years. I did the math on that one, by the way, it's right. <laughs> I didn't believe it at first. You see, the EPA and its regulations have a huge impact on our electric rates. Weather also plays a big role in our operations, and we've been blessed so far this year with no major damage brought on by storms, ice, or floods. However, we did experience extremes in temperature leading to record-setting electric sales. You may remember that January morning when it got down to 16 below zero, or the fact that we didn't have a spring this year the weather went from cold to hot. 
We had the second coldest April in state history, followed by the hottest May. But you know what they say, only in Missouri. So what about rates in 2019? I gave you a preview of that earlier. You know, last year at this meeting, I told you I thought a rate increase was going to come in 2018. But I made you a promise. And that promise is we will never raise your electric rates until we absolutely have no other choice. I'm a believer in that adage. If you're going to, walk, if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. And after that meeting, we went through the budget process, and we managed to shift some costs around, and we avoided raising your rates for 2018. However, when I told you last January we would not have a rate increase in 18, I told you a rate increase would be coming in 19. NUMAC has received several rate increases from our suppliers through the years. This past year, we did our best to absorb those increases in power costs from CAMO Power. Meanwhile, CAMO continued to invest in transmission system improvements and has spent over a half billion dollars in that effort. These improvements are vital to keep your electricity supply both secure and reliable. So once again, I'm here to tell you that we might have a rate increase in 19. We'll know for sure when we go through the budget process in December. We did have great sales in 18, but we've put off an increase for two years now. And I don't know if we'll be able to do it again. If, if we have an increase, it would be effective January 1st, and it would show up on the bill you receive in February. And we'll give you more details about the 2019 rates in our January newsletter. Now, all in all, when I look back at 2018, it's been a good year for your co-op, mostly because we've worked safely with no major injuries. For that, I'm always very thankful. Safety is the most important thing. <laughs> Safety is the most important thing that we do at this co-op. And now I'd like to show you a video of some of the things we've accomplished this past year. Snapshots of our lives is the theme of our 2018 annual meeting. And when we look back at the past year, we've got some good snapshots to show you. It starts with providing reliable electric service, which means maintaining infrastructure. This past year, we replaced 30 miles of single phase electric lines with new poles and conductor in areas such as Fairview, Stark City, and Newtonia. And we built two miles of three phase lines along Iris Road in Newton County. Additionally, we changed out around 600 poles in the areas of Wheaton, Sims, and Jane. We also continued to bolster our system's communication capabilities with approximately 2,000 more two-way meters, which will aid in response time to reliability issues and power restoration. Providing dependable service also means keeping trees a safe distance from power lines. With nearly 3,000 miles of line, tree trimming is a never-ending endeavor for your co-op. In 2018, we will spend approximately $2.4 million on right-of-way maintenance. That includes clearing three feeder lines coming out of our Spurgeon substation, which serves Tipton Ford, Spring City, and Spurgeon. We also cleared four feeders out of our Neosho substation, which serves the areas of Neosho, Fredville, and Westview. In order to keep right-of-ways under control, we performed low-volume spraying along the circuits served from the Jane, Sims, and Goodman substations. Most importantly, we accomplished all of this work safely, with no major injuries to report. Most NUMAC members are already using our online services available at NUMAC.com or through the Smart Hub app for your mobile device. If you're not yet registered to do so, our newly renovated offices now feature kiosk stations where we can help set up your online account. If you'd prefer, our automated pay-by-phone service allows you to access your account 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Our free seminar series, NUMAC University, continues to receive rave reviews. Topics are related to electricity and your co-op. You are invited to attend any class that appeals to you, and you will not be behind if you've missed past sessions. The next class will be offered in the spring, both at Neosho and Anderson.
We continue to be involved with youth and education through school safety programs and scholarships to a senior at each of the 10 school districts in our service area. We also help develop future leaders through our Youth Tour Cycle Contest. For the third year in a row, Numax sent two high school juniors to Washington, D.C. for a week and two more to Jefferson City for three days of learning about leadership, government, and co-ops. Lydia Rockers of Carthage and Owen Gray of Diamond were our delegates in D.C. and Brayton Link of East Newton and homeschooler Emma Bragg represented us at the state capitol. We hope you enjoyed our snapshots of the past year. We look forward to many more picture-worthy moments as we serve you in the years to come. Josh King and Zane Burner put that video together and that drone footage was shot by our good friend Greg Sweeten from Pineville. Thought they did a real good job with it. It was a productive year and at this time I'd like to recognize your NUMAC employees for all their good work. Will all the employees please stand? Let's give them all a round of applause. It's also an honor and a privilege to work with your New Mac Electric Board of Directors, and I believe they should be recognized for their dedication to our cooperatives. Will the board please stand? Of course, there's no way to have an event like this like we are having today without the great help from the folks we receive here at Crowder College. They help us every single year. How about a round of applause for Crowder? So in closing, I've saved the most important people to thank for last. And those people are you, the members of Numac Electric. I've been blessed to do this job for many years. I believe this is the 23rd annual meeting address I have given and over those 23 years, I've gotten to know many of you. The annual meeting is a time of greeting old friends for me, many that I know their names very well and many that are a friendly face I see every year. Over those years, we've discussed business, we've discussed family, and we've discussed life in general. We've laughed and we've cried with each other. And most importantly, we've always respected each other. You are part of the snapshots of my life, and NUMAC is part of the snapshots of yours. It's been, a very good it's been a very good run over all those years for the co-op, and I'm very thankful for that. There's a word I don't use often because it means a great deal to me, and that word's promise. You heard me say it earlier when I promised you we would not raise your rates until we have to, and I think we've always proven that. And I want to end this presentation this year with another promise. I promise you, we will always do our very best for you. Because like I said, you're part of my snapshots and I like the picture. Thank you all. <laughs>